Today's lecture is uh, an invited lecture uh, from Ahmed El Rabayai. Uh, Ahmed is my PhD student, but he's very knowledgeable on this subject, and um, he's been working with biochar for quite a while now. Uh, and uh, Ahmed is working with biochar in the context of uh, amendments for soil and the remediation for uh, dealing with soil salinity issues. And he's uh, dealing with this work uh, with using uh, available sources in Oman and also uh, uh, how to appropriately use this uh, biochar for Omani reality and for Omani conditions. Uh, so without further ado, I would just uh, hand the floor for Ahmed, let him introduce himself and start his lecture. Thank you, Ahmed, for joining. Thank you, Doctor, for your nice uh, introduce. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ahmed Rubai, and uh, as Doctor Daniel, I'm working under under uh, Doctor Daniel. I'm working, uh, as he mentioned, in uh, reclamation of saline soil by using by as a soil amendment. Uh, the lecture today will be about. Uh, organic waste management by converting to biochar. Uh, in this lecture, uh, I will give you a brief introduction about introduction about uh, solid waste, the meaning of solid waste, and uh, the sources, why we need to manage this uh, waste. Then we will speak about biochar, what's biochar, the history, production, and the potential of using biochar, and I will conclude uh, uh, by some uh, re uh, recent published paper uh, about uh, biochar. So, what's organic waste? The organic waste is any waste that contain materials originated from any living organisms. So the chemist people said any compound consists of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Uh, biologists said the materials come from the ones living units. So all these meaning end up with any waste originated from living organisms. So this waste, it will end up uh, in landfills, and uh, uh, for decompose or uh, it will end up in the incinerators. Burning this waste is the biggest problem or largest problem uh, faced uh, because it's the uh, largest source of uh, dioxins. Uh, even here in Oman, most of farmers uh, looking to clean their farms by burn their uh, organic or agricultural waste. According to World Bank, 70% uh, or they, they will be increased 70% of uh, this organic waste during the next 30 years because of population growth and urbanization and economic development. So the rising, it will be it will reach to 3.4 billion tons annually, which is more than double of population growth by 2050. So there are many different sources of organic waste, uh, which come from, uh, it can come from agricultural, yard and forestry, uh, forestry waste, sludge from STBs, uh, food factories, and organic fraction and municipal uh, waste so uh, uh, this is uh, this is one of uh, articles which have been published last month according to the United Nation only the food waste uh, uh, it's estimated in 2019 95 kg per capita which is very high uh, and this estimation, it's almost the same even for uh, uh, our neighbor uh, countries like UAE, Qatar, and uh, Kuwait. 
this is only come from the food waste, which is recognized as organic uh, waste. So why we need to control this type of waste? Because we need to conserve space in our landfills and save our resources, controlling several environmental and public health, uh, which could lead to uh, emission of greenhouse gases and managing the leachate, which can reach our groundwater tables and pollute uh, our groundwater. So we need to control this waste and we need a solution that make this uh, organic waste uh, harmless and environmentally friend. So uh, the best solution is converted to biochar. What's biochar? Biochar is a product of biomass uh, heated in a limited or uh, uh, in absence of oxygen. The system is of, of heating called pyrolysis. So we can use it as a soil amendment and it's already used when a group of scientists have discovered mixed of soil uh, in uh, Amazon. And this soil called uh, Tierra Brita soil, now it's a very famous soil. So they have got two types of soil. Uh, they have got one black soil, which is more fertile and uh, they saw that the, the, the trees there and uh, shrimps is very green and other uh, soil which is very weak and poor of nutrients. So it get attention since they have discovered this soil in Amazon and because of, because of the properties of this soil which have, I mean, increased the nutrients in the soil, uh, by adding this uh, stable carbon, it gets attention. And this attention is cover the world. So the global scientific publication, it have increased since or in last 10 years, uh, only studying this stable uh, carbon uh, and how we can use it as a soil amendment and how it can uh, improve the soil physical physical, chemical properties. So many studies have been published in uh, last years. And the main reason of studying uh, and uh, this publication is the stability of this uh, product. The biochar is more stable than other organic matters. So it can uh, stay for 10, 100,000 of years. It depends about the type of feedstocks. So there are many different ways to produce this biochar by pyrolyzing the biomass. We can uh, use traditional way by making a hole in the, or digging in the area and put the biomass, uh, burn it, then cover directly uh, the hole to limit, it, to limit the, the oxygen. Or we can for lang, uh, large scale using the machine, very big machine, and in this machine we can uh, make a renewable energy and reuse the heat of which come from the pyrolysis system. And also there is a portable way by heating and directly uh, uh, return the biochar to the soil. So all these process or all these ways, it's almost the same because it's working in the one condition in a limit or heating in a limit uh, oxygen. After we charring or biochar uh, or pyrolyze, so we can directly apply the biochar to the soil or even combine uh, or use it as additive with compost. And both of them, uh, it will enhance or it will impact directly in the soil uh, and to the also uh, to the agriculture. For example, when we apply it or use it as an additive to the compost, uh, the, the humification process, it will be better. And even the nitrogen retention and carbon sequestration, 
uh, it will limit the greenhouse uh, gases uh, emission. Uh, heavy metals, it will also immobilize or it will absorb. When we will apply it directly uh, to the soil, of course, it will uh, enhance uh, directly to the uh, to the soil by it will modify the physical and chemical properties of that soil. So there are two main factors can be affected in uh, the biomass when while we co uh, convert it to biochar. Uh, the pyrolysis temperature can affect the uh, characteristics of the biochar and also the feed stock type. So these properties of soil, uh, like pH, specific uh, surface area, pore volume, cation exchange capacity, volatile matter, ash and carbon content, it depends about or it depends on the pyrolysis temperature and feed stock uh, types, uh, and these characteristics or properties of soil it can enable uh, some other specific functions of a biochar for example uh, porous structure it will enable or it will provide shelter for microorganisms it will be very conditioned for the organisms and also it will increase the sorption and uh, when we will make strong carbon, uh, uh, of course, it will enhance the carbon sequestration. Uh, even for the functional groups, the, the, the ECE, electron uh, capacity exchange, uh, or exchange capacity, electron, it, will, it will increase electronic donor and acceptor. Of course, it will also lead to active redux. Uh, also, it will enable the sorption sites. Uh, when we do this biochar, it will be alkaline, or the pH, it will be alkaline, which is will be uh, very suitable or recommended for the uh, uh, soil to increase the pH, I mean for the acidic soil, and even uh, the ash of that biochar, it will uh, increase the uh, CEC. So what are the differences between biochars? As I have mentioned that there are two main factors can affect on the biochar properties, the temperature of biochar and feedstock. Also, the, it, will, it will make differences between the type of biochar like surface area, ash content, uh, CEC, water holding capacity, pH, uh, hydrogen to carbon ratio, carbon to nitrogen ratio, porosity, elemental composition. And there are two main aspects make this biochar superior to any other materials. Biochar, uh, it will stay very long time in the soil, so it has high stability against decay, uh, and it can return the nutrients and preserve that nutrients uh, for long time. So always we can see that it's added uh, with something else to return that nutrients in the soil. So also biochar has the poten potential to improve agricultural soil by modifying the soil chemical properties for the soil pH and nutrient retention and availability. It will increase the infiltration rate and leaching of that soil. There is some uh, biological impacts of using biochar as amendment in the soil it can decrease the heavy metal bioavailability in the soil. It will provide microbial habitat, alter, uh, alert the microbial functions. It will enhance the microrise plant association. Also, it will promote biological nitrogen fixation by logiums. Here we can see how biochar can sequest sequestrate the carbon or when we will convert the organic waste to biochar, we will sequestrate the carbon or we will make it stable. It will not uh, return it back or release it uh, to the atmosphere. In the normal way, when we will not chart or we will not uh, convert the, any organic materials, it will decompose 
or it will burn. So 99% of carbon, it will release to the atmosphere. But when we will convert this organic materials to stable carbon, like biochar, 50% uh, all, only it will uh, emitted or it will release to the atmosphere. So by this way, we can uh, sequestrate the carbon or we will decrease the emission of dioxide carbon to the atmosphere. And also biochar has influence in nitrogen uh, cycling. Uh, while the nitrogen transformation in the composting process, so uh, the biochar or adding biochar in the compost, it will increase the uh, pH and uh, also it it will enhance the process of nitrogen to converting to the uh, uh, nitrite and natarat. So it has influence in the nitrification and uh, as well in the denitrification by uh, incomplete the denitrification. So by this way, it, uh, using biochar uh, during composting, it will reduce the emission of uh, uh, nitrous uh, oxide to the uh, atmosphere and by this way we will mitigate the greenhouse uh, gases. So here we can see how biochar can uh, modify the physical and chemical properties on the soil. So when we will add biochar to the soil, the uh, nutrients it will be holding for a long time and the plants can get benefit from this because it can absorb that the nutrients which have uh, uh, preserved in that uh, biochar and also uh, by this way we were reducing the adding we will reduce the adding of uh, fertilizer so no need to add fertilizer many times only uh, even the amounts of fertilizer because most of fertilizer it will not leach it so it will hold it by this uh, biochar for a long uh, time uh, this is some previous studies from Oman have been published uh, recently uh, they have mentioned that biochar can be used as amendment in soil and it will help to improve water and nutrients use efficiency uh, and of course it will improve the productivity of agriculture sector biochar also in another study biochar may change the soil biological community compos composition and abundance and return the pesticides applied so it will decrease the application of adding uh, like fertilizer and pesticides the biochar and compost amendment showed significant effects on soil and electrical conductivity. However, they did not show any statistically significant uh, differences for soil uh, uh, pH. So is there any impacts of biochar and uh, uh, can we get benefit from uh, this stable carbon? Do you think that converting the organic waste to stable carbon is more beneficial to our uh, country and uh, uh, our world. So of course there are many and still the study is running to get more uh, benefits uh, or get more information about this stable carbon. Thank you for uh, your uh, attention and I hope that I give you or it is a more informative presentation. Thank you, Ahmed. Um, I will open the floor for the students to ask questions about this topic. And uh, I have some questions also to uh, create some discussion. Um, please, the floor is open if any of the students wants, want to ask questions. I know the audio was a little bit choppy, but uh, I hope you still could follow uh, because of the, the visual on the slides, so okay. the floor is open. Anybody has have questions? 
Yes. Can, could you please, Dr. Ahmed, explain a little bit more about the traditional way of making biochar? Uh, yes, you may in this way. Uh, in the practical, uh, I mean, uh, class, uh, Dr. Daniel will explain you more about how we do this uh, traditional because we give him many pictures. But tra traditionally, when you want to make it in your farm, only dig a hole and you can put your biomass and uh, burn it. When you saw that it's burned, you can cover it directly to limit the oxygen uh, inside the hole. So uh, the fire, it will stop, but still the heating, uh, it will be inside and it will, it, will, it, it will char. So this is the traditional way. And uh, we did here in the experimental, uh, uh, here in, 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 in SQU, by bringing a very big reactors, we call it re reactor, and make a hole only, burn it, and close that one, and it will burn inside. It will, the, 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 the fire, it will stop inside. So only the small smoke, it will come uh, out and then it will chart. We don't like to ash. In this way, uh, uh, we, uh, why we are limiting the oxygen, we don't like to ash and we don't like to burn even the carbon. We need that, that carbon to be, uh, I mean, we, to get uh, only carbon. I don't know, maybe Dr. Daniel looking to add some something about this. Yes, so so the the uh, the structure that is traditionally used for making uh, biochar is is uh, or, or it's charcoal actually. It's the same way you make charcoal, and uh, it's called a kiln. Uh, and this uh, it it can be made in different ways. Either is a hole in the soil where you make a fire. When that fire is very strong. Uh, with a lot of heat, you cover it you know, with soil, uh, with clay, with uh, you know, even with more organic matter, in a way that you reduce the oxygen supply for that fire. You extinguish, you ex extinguish the fire, and by when you when you extinguish that fire by uh, cutting the oxygen supply, what happens is the heat will continue burning uh, that biomass and the 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 type of carbon present on the biomass will change and uh, become uh, uh, more of an aromatic nature. And that aromatic nature, will it's the black carbon. Yeah, It's the black carbon, and the black carbon is highly resistant to being uh, degraded by microbes. That is the charcoal. Uh, the, this, this, uh, uh, this is the way that has been done uh, uh, for manufactured charcoal for thousands of years, and it's, I, I guess, in Oman also that is being done in the villages. And uh, um, the the same way you make biochar is the same way you make charcoal. So I will ask uh, Ahmed to clarify a little bit the difference. Why do we call biochar and not charcoal? Yes, uh, it's not totally burned. In charcoal, we need to burn it we will add oxygen to burn it and uh, we will lose uh, even the nutrients. So in uh, biochar, no, we will only provide heat, but in, limiting, uh, in the limited of oxygen. Uh, I can give you an example, uh, doctor. Uh, here in our traditional, in Eid, in third days, or sometimes in, two, in the second days, uh, we make which called tanur. In a big hole, we put, uh, like wood and burn it. When we will put the meat directly, we close that one. So we have limited the oxygen. The meat, it will not uh, burn it. So uh, in this way, we will get uh, a biochar from that one. But uh, most of them, maybe it's 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 become uh, charcoal because we uh, let that one to totally burn everything. So we got the heat to, to heat uh, the meat and uh, also, we got that uh, biochar. It's almost the same way. But when we, in biochar, in the limited oxygen, I mean, when we will burn the wood or the biomass, when we saw that uh, uh, burn is very strong, we close it, and then it will heat inside. It will pyrolyze inside in a limited or absence of oxygen. 
I hope uh, you get the point. Yeah, so just complementing that, biochar is charcoal. Yeah, the, 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 the chemical nature of the charred material is absolutely the same. Charcoal and biochar, they are, they are the same thing. The only difference is the purpose in which you are making this. Uh, if you were making it for uh, using as a source of uh, energy for barbecue, for you know heating up later or using that for cooking or whatever it is that you that's what you call charcoal even for uh, burning incense but if you were making it directly for the soil uh, then uh, you call it biochar and the manufacture process will differ that normally when you make charcoal uh, at the end of the process you add paraffin or another fuel to the charcoal that will help you ignite the the the, the charred material uh, w uh, for the purposes of, uh, of burning it later on. But when you do it for biochar, there's no addition of fuel on that material. So this is the main uh, difference of the end product. One is mixed with some sort of fuel, normally paraffin, and the other one is just pure uh, charred material uh, in the pounder form that will be used as an amendment for soils. Uh, uh, any other questions from the students? How long does it take to be made? Sorry? How long? How to long make? does it take? Yeah. Uh, you mean the retention time? It depends about... Uh, we need to be sure that it's... All that one is uh, heated. And uh, it's many, many, many studies that reveal that when uh, we need to specific characteristics of that biochar. Uh, we we will go for specific temperature. I mean, if I will char at the 350 or 400 for one hour, I will get of course different characteristics. When I will char it at 550 for two hours or three hours, so it depends about the feedstock and the temperature. So it will take only. Even one hour, it's more enough. And it, it, it depends about the temperature, which I'm going to take it. Uh, let me complement that answer. If you have a traditional way of like having a hole in the soil, uh, it, it may take days for making the biochar because you want to completely let the system cool down before you open. Because if you open it and it's hot, it will just burn and it will finish. Uh, it will become ash. It will not become a, a charred material. So if you have the, the, the traditional ways like you have here in the in the photograph from Ahmed, the top one, it may, it may take days. But if you have a system where you can regulate the temperature, uh, uh, even one hour is enough. Yeah, with Anna, one hour is enough. The only thing you have to take care of is when you finish this process, you should continue to maintain that the, there is a limited oxygen supply for the material. If you open the oxygen supply then it will burn and will become ash instead of a charred material. So this is the only, uh, but it takes about one hour. You can prolong this. The slower you make, the better, but you can do it very quickly also. There is no limitation for, for the time. You can do it very quickly, one hour, or you can do it slowly, even in days. Does that answer the question, Rashida? Yes, sure it does, Doctor. Anybody else with questions, please? Uh, I have a question for Ahmed and uh, just yes. to start the discussion about uh, uh, wh why biochar is being proposed as a, 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 a solution or a, a technology in the context of climate change? What is the relationship between, uh, can you uh, explain a little bit more why biochar and climate change? Why is the, the big fuss about biochar and climate change? Yes, doctor. If we will uh, allow the biomass or uh, organic waste to decompose, of course, while in the decomposition, they will uh, emit dioxide carbon uh, directly to the uh, our uh, atmosphere. 
But if we will char it, we will make stable carbon. And the decomposition of stable carbon, it, it will take thousands of years. So we slow down the, I mean, the, 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 the decomposition, or we make stable carbon than other to emit it to the atmosphere. Uh, so when we will convert this organic waste to biochar, we will stable it. It will be harmless and it will not emit dioxide carbon, same, uh, same rate of uh, while it's uh, decomposition in landfills or in uh, any way. All right, I will complement that a little bit more. Uh, the, the, when, when in the context of climate, climate change, we are looking into ways of removing carbon from the atmosphere, CO2, and yes. uh, fixing in other environments. And the soil environment is one of the biggest candidates for this. You know, in the way you accumulate uh, carbon in soils is uh, uh, true mainly through organic matter. So if you add uh, some uh, compost or crop residues, any source of organic matter for the soil, what you expect is, especially in tropical climates and in arid climates, when you have uh, uh, hot climates, fresh organic matter will have a short life in soil. Few years, it will be almost completely decomposed. So the carbon will be re returning to the atmosphere. Yes, uh, and it's good for, as a, a source of nutrient. If you add compost, if you add uh, uh, crop residues, it's a very good source of nutrients. Slow release, uh, it's boosting the microbial activity. It's very good for the soil, uh, but it's not long lasting as a way of storing carbon in the soil, and it's always depending in constant inputs of this organic matter every year to maintain a certain level of carbon storage in the soil. So the advantage of biochar, as Ahmed uh, correctly pointed out, is the stability, the long-term stability in soils. And if you have a half-life over a thousand years of, of uh, some fraction of that biochar, uh, and you add it to soils, the, the, the carbon that you're adding today uh, will be staying on the soil for uh, the, the future generations even and you are uh, actually and in the context of climate change the fact that it's so stable it, it is a plus yeah um, and uh, the other thing that we are looking at is that from the agronomic side this biochar is helping the fertility of soils in almost any way you can imagine it's helping uh, uh, in, the, in all the, the chemical, physical, and biological properties of these soils. Uh, there, are some, uh, there are some limitations of uh, biochar, and I will ask a, a few questions for Ahmed about these limitations. Uh, yes. Ahmed, you, you explained that biochar is an alkaline amendment. Yes, so and, it's better, yeah. And Oman, Oman soils are alkaline. Also. Alkaline, yeah. So, what, what is the point of adding an alkaline amendment for an alkaline soil? Can you explain that? What is the, how do you get around this? We can, uh, I mean, get the benefit while we add this uh, biochar as alkaline to the alkaline uh, soil uh, uh, to get, I mean, the physical or to, 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 to modify the physical properties of soil. So we don't like to increase the pH but we can combine biochar with other uh, element that acidify the soil. And at the same time, we can, uh, while acidifying the soil, uh, adding this biochar to modifying the physical properties of, uh, and chemical properties, of course, of the soil. So, and so, uh, it's, it's recommended only for the uh, acidic soil because it's alkaline uh, amendment, but, uh, at the same time, we can add it if we will acidify the soil, acidify the soil, and uh, add it to modify the uh, characteristics uh, or physical characteristics of uh, soil. So, in your thesis, what is the acidifying agent that you are using? Uh, we will use elemental sulfur. Okay. Elemental sulfur. Uh, yeah. 
So yeah. elemental sulfur, uh, when it's uh, uh, oxidized in the soil, releases uh, hydrogen, and by uh, by because it it it, uh, it produces sulfate, and so the sulfate will will uh, bind the hydroxide and release the hydrogen, yeah. uh, and that will acidify the, the the soil environment. So if you combine biochar with elemental sulfur you yeah. may uh, counteract the alkalinity of the biochar with the acidification properties of the elemental sulfur. This is what Ahmed is studying on his thesis. Uh, exactly. uh, and this is a, it's a way of balancing uh, the, both the, the, the alkalinity of the biochar and also at the same time uh, working on the uh, physical properties of the soils that is helping also in, in, in many other things, including salinity management. Okay. Um, any other question from the students? So it seems that uh, all of them they understand well of <laughs> of this uh, lecture, doctor. Last opportunity.